This must be um, one of the most written about and analysed election defeats uh, of the federal government. So I'm sure a lot of you have read a lot of um, good stuff about it. There were many important issues that affected different segments of the community and uh, William's talked about them very well in, in aggregate. My, I'm much more focused on the why and the what um, if, with this sort of content. So there were many uh, important issues, different segments uh, of the community in different states. So many of you will remember the meeting we had to analyse the 2019 uh, federal election. And uh, I think my point here is that none of these things are unexplainable or really all that surprising. So I'm going back to that point in history to point out that uh, at the end of that analysis of Labor's loss, I listed the elements of hope, which were um, the volatility of the electorate. That's the fact that a large proportion of people now consider changing their vote and the importance of narratives, issues and values built up over time providing a great deal of opportunity for change uh, in surprising ways, as it turned out this time. So uh, we also have the capacity to engage with people in places like Queensland and in the outer suburbs of Perth, because the issues are never as simple as a dichotomy between something like coal and the environment. Uh, it has a lot to do with who cares about us, jobs, the cost of living, and the elements that underpin the well-being of people who don't have high incomes in each of those regions in a modern economy. So people were craving answers to many of the long-term problems that are underpinning their futures, where they live, including the future of work and incomes in this country. And that's something that people have been thinking about for a long time. They supported also strong public services that underpin health, well-being and opportunity and addressing climate change. Climate change was very prominent and rising in the list of issues people were concerned about in 2019, uh, whether our politicians were talking about it or not. So um, the high volatility has been with us now for 30 years and uh, it's played out through changes in votes for minor parties, big swings um, for and against major parties at state elections that we've seen and the seismic shift we saw this time with the teals that William went through. So um, soft voters represent different, these are people who consider changing their vote, represent different segments. Some are politically disengaged and don't have time to be seeing a lot of current affairs. Have we got them? Oh yes, lovely. <laughs> um, but many are intelligent people who follow issues over a long period of time. Uh, and have very real concerns about the future and issues affecting them, such as jobs, health care, cost of living, aged care, access to tertiary education and access to tertiary education for their children, facilities and services available in their communities and addressing climate change. And, uh, and we've seen that played out with the relationship with education that, um, that William has been talking about. Finally, these people decide who to vote for based on reasons underpinned by real issues, long-term narratives and lived experience. And people who ignore those things do so at their peril. Uh, they're looking for genuine connection and commitment, not political point scoring. And a political slogan only works if it resonates with a real issue. So in 2019, Anthony Albanese became leader of the opposition and the Morrison government basked in their victory for the rest of the year. Um, uh, then in the spring and summer of 2019, the fires came, extreme heat and fires in WA started early. Then we had catastrophic fires taking hold in the Eastern States as the uh, black summer fires raged. Uh, we saw tragic loss of life, homes, farms and livelihoods devastation of huge swathes of our national parks and the loss of billions of wildlife. Sydney and Melbourne were blanketed in smoke, leading to more ill health and deaths, uh, and Australia's international reputation also uh, went up in smoke. Scott Morrison failed to show the leadership people were looking for in this crisis, not seen as offering solutions, assistance or empathy. The holiday in Hawaii, uh, in the midst of the crisis, and particularly the cover-up afterwards, 
created a stark commentary on his understanding of what people needed from a leader, uh, his honesty and his propensity for spin. Firefighting experts said that their warnings and requests had not been met, communities did not receive timely assistance, and there was a desire to avoid discussing the role of climate change in those fires. So electors felt that their concerns about climate change were coming into stark, unignorable reality with very real costs after years of the coalition failing to act and going the wrong way in many areas. So the bushfire disaster ensured that climate change would not be ignored at the next federal election uh, and the floods and more floods have continued, you know, to tragically reinforce the point. Then in mid-January 2020 came the report into the Community Sports Grant Program from the lead up to 2019 election. And it showed that worthy applicants missed out in favour of coalition marginal seats and the sports rorts affair echoed down through the following two years, fed into people calling for a Federal Integrity Commission. Uh, this stood in marked contrast to the robo-debt affair, where so, men, so much harm was done pursuing people unjustly and ultimately unlawfully with very little responsibility taken. As the fires raged, we also saw the emergence of a virus, first in China, then in uh, other countries, and I guess we were all wondering where that was going to end. Through 2020 and 2021, the pandemic dominated uh, state politics in every state, and the federal government's actions had a big impact on how they were viewed. Job seeker was, uh, rather job keeper, was a major positive for the federal government, uh, with many small businesses and their employees very grateful for it. So the federal government did enjoy a positive period at that time, with also uh, the reasonably unprecedented cooperation between Labor and Liberal at that stage. Later marred by the news that billions were given to large companies that didn't need it, uh, some of whom uh, treated their employees badly. Having done paperwork for JobKeeper, I have no idea how that worked. Anyway, other sectors also missed out. Um, there are also state-by-state -state differences in the vote uh, at federal elections. I mean, there are always state-by-state -state differences um, based on local factors, but they were ma greatly magnified at this election uh, with the central role that each state premier played in COVID management and also the different journey that each state went on through the two years with you know, some of the lockdowns in Victoria and so forth having an effect on uh, the vote, as William was saying. Um, for, Morris, for Morrison, there was a series of negatives in the federal government's handling of the pandemic. I think people, are, you know, are well aware of them. A lack of action on quarantine that wore thinner as the pandemic dragged on. Lack of medical supplies, PPE and lack of local production, slow rollout of the vaccines paved with many issues that had not been thought through. Partisan treatment of the states, including, of course, the sustained opposition to WA's closed borders. Problems in Victoria with Dan Andrews accusing Morrison of being the Prime Minister for New South Wales. I'd have to say that Morrison's lack of strong leadership through the fires contributed to the very positive response Mark McGowan got uh, for his dogged determination to prioritise health in WA, to both protect West Australians and the WA economy. So these things fed on each other uh, as it rolled on. Uh, finally, at the end of 2021, we had the very chaotic opening up in the East, just as Omicron took hold, skyrocketing levels of illness in New South Wales and Victoria, leading to hospital problems, uh, lack of medical staff through illness, lack of truck drivers and workers in many industries, major supply shortages, health impacts, loss of work and incomes for many. And that was exacerbated by a shortage of rats and a failure to anticipate what those likely problems were going to be. So at the end of last year, and as uh, the election approached, there were many issues building, most of them have got a long narrative arc with soft voters. Often it was very clear that Morrison and his ministers lacked an understanding of how electors see those issues uh, and what their lived experience is. 
his remarks were peppered with political rejoiners that showed that he just didn't get it on so many issues. And I'm not sure who he thought would be impressed by them. I've got no idea who he thought he was talking to half the time. Uh, and it gave people rich pickings and showing where the coalition went wrong after the election. On climate change, the government's rhetoric remained the same, technology, not taxes, which some people interpreted as faith, not action. Uh, and the final movement towards net zero was seen as too little, too late, very disingenuous, undermined by uh, Barnaby Joyce and Matt Canavan. Regional communities were looking to see who was offering the most uh, realistic and supportive plan for their future. Communities affected by floods did not receive enough timely assistance. On their understanding of the issues faced by women, starting with Tony Abbott, having one woman in, ca in cabinet, treatment of Julie Bishop, on through the issues highlighted by Grace Tame, women in parliament, um, the behaviour of ministers, issues of safety and respect that affect all women, uh, the resistance to quotas, i.e. change in the Liberal Party, right through to the impact of the pandemic on the continuing plight of women in low paid, casualised and caring professions. Punctuated by breathtakingly insen insensitive comments made by Mr Morrison. So there was a great deal of palpable anger that built up among professional women. Many of them already interested in lots of other issues, already potentially having uh, moved their vote previous elections. Nevertheless, that layered uh, a strong sense of emotion across the top of all of that and did have a very real effect. Uh, there was um, debates about whether Scott Morrison lies and comments made by people who have worked with him on his own side were extremely damaging. There's a lack of an integrity commission, history of misspending through sports rorts, also resonating with Mr Morrison's reputation for slippery answers rather than genuine action. Uh, as um, uh, also the protracted pre-selection battle in New South Wales, I can't imagine how a government that wanted to be returned could be pre-selecting candidates in key seats within months, let alone weeks of um, calling an election. And I must say that was when I, when I hadn't fixed that by Christmas, that was when I believed they'd lost. Uh, the Liberals were hoping to lean on traditional strengths of national security and being seen as better economic managers. On China, uh, there have been concerns about China among soft voters over an extended period of time, including the lease of, Di uh, of Darwin Port in 2015, investment in Australian industries, food security, uh, and recently trade concerns and geopolitical concerns, uh, tensions that we've all heard a lot about. So there were some soft voters who were concerned that Labor might be weak on this issue. However, the Morrison government mishandled it with the debacle around submarines, further damaging our international reputation, apparently leaving a capacity gap in defence, wasting large sums of money. Mr Dutton's comments about preparing uh, for war, extremely counterproductive, damaging for Chinese Australians who felt less safe and moved their votes at the election, as William talked about. And... Uh, these comments also misread how people see this issue in general. Because those who are concerned about China and about defence in general want to see in intelligent diplomacy, strategic planning, building of a strong ADF and defence capacity, all in order to prevent war. Uh, finally, the Solomon Islands Pact and the lack of positive engagement with our Pacific neighbours showed that the government was not doing a good job on this particular issue at any level. On being better economic managers, got another slide, there it is. Um, on being better at economic managers, that's obviously a historical strength for the coalition and Morrison's big thing in 2019, undermined by rising inflation and finally rising interest rates. Wages falling behind over years and the rising cost of living, people's lack of faith in the way unemployment and the cost of living are measured, uh, rising numbers of working poor and insecure employment, 
a false dichotomy between health and the economy that saw supply lines and business seriously disrupted and then de facto lockdowns. A failure to acknowledge the major economic impacts of climate change, proper energy planning, and a failure to undertake uh, to take advantage of the opportunities with renewable energy. In WA, obviously, the closed borders were clearly much better for the WA economy, people's personal incomes, and ultimately the Australian economy. So uh, analyses like the ABC's Vote Compass showed that um, people who cited economy, the economy as the top issue, swang away from the coalition in 2022. Feature of the Morrison government and the nine years of coalition government was not doing enough on vital issues that were of concern before and then further heightened through the pandemic. Job insecurity and casual employment, cost of living increases, aged care, homelessness and the high cost of housing, problems facing young people such as jobs and training, housing costs. The need for more manufacturing, more renewable energy, more planning for long-term jobs in Australia. In the background, many other issues uh, where people could not see things, where people could see things going backwards, and that list could be much longer. But I, in there, I've put loss of jobs in the university sector, reductions in grants for science and research and development, undermining the ABC, disability services, and the NDIS. So. Why was the uh, Labor first preference relatively low? <laughs> In WA, it wasn't. Uh, so there was a 7% swing to Labor on first preferences and um, in uh, two-party preferred swing in excess of 10% and an extra senator. Uh, there were also other state-by-state -state effects based on COVID experiences such as in Tasmania and so forth. But more generally, there was baggage. Uh, traumatic memories of the Rudd-Gillard-Rudd years made it hard to point to strengths and experience. The 2019 defeat led to difficulty in creating strong points of policy difference, apart from childcare and climate change, uh, in order to keep the focus on Morrison and the government. And uh, many of the negatives from Morrison turned people off all politicians and politics. And it was hard to get cut through. Messages were hard for people to hear. People didn't know what Anthony Albanese stood for and they found him quite hard to listen to. People said they were wanting to hear Labor's vision. We're not hearing their plan, but the fact is that policies such as uh, reinvigorating Medicare and improving primary care and the manufacturing policies are quite complex. So it was very difficult in that environment. Um, many people had decided that uh, the Morrison government had to go. This is very excellent graph off William's bludger track showing uh, what the polls were saying. Um, and there we have, if people can see it, we've got, you know, the Labor vote rising with the fires, Liberals doing relatively well when JobKeeper and political cooperation was happening. Then we've got the vaccine problems and climate change and so many other issues. So many people decided the Morrison government had to go, but unfortunately, first week of the campaign inflamed questions about whether Labor was prepared and up to the job, uh, and the first preference vote took a hit. Problems in the first week included the unemployment number gaff, but more importantly, uh, a general sense of not being sharp, prepared, uh, and across the issues. There was also the announcement that there would be no review of the job seeker payment, which was depressing for progressive voters. Through commentary on the debates and so forth, credibility was clawed back during the campaign, but uh, that was a question of clawing back rather than moving too far forward. Uh, the Teal campaigns made the election more interesting and promoted issues which helped in all the other electorates as well. The wages debate, I would also say, was an important moment that created a clear point of difference and was an error for Morrison on incomes and the economy. People got the vibe that Morrison was opposed to wage increases as part of his idea of good economic management. 
Uh, soft voters have always supported wage increases for low income earners that keep pace with wages. People also um, don't believe that affording rent, food and electricity is inflationary. Generally, people care uh, about the economy because it supports their income, including wages. And people also know that real wages going backwards is recessionary. Some other points I would make uh, among many that people might want to discuss, gotcha moments and summary phrases like Mark McGowan's popularity are for journalists. Among electors, it's about real issues and complex narratives. Most electors understand our electoral system. Uh, they use the preferential system to be heard uh, as well as to decide their representatives and prime ministers. And so when people think that the importance of an issue is being measured by the vote, they'll do things like vote Green 1, Labor 2, um, knowing it is ultimately the Labor preference that will count. So it'll be interesting to see how that evolves over time. Um, although the major parties can't take voters for granted, people do expect one of the major parties to govern. Uh, they expect them to have the necessary experience and professionalism but they also want that to be tempered by other voices. And um, I could say that this uh, could be the Prime Minister you're looking for. Soft voters have long wanted to see an end to the divisiveness and a more constructive approach, uh, long-term solutions and detailed considerations of the problems. They believe that politicians are mostly in it for themselves and they want politicians who put a priority on making a difference and achieving positive goals, rather than just being there and scoring political points. This and the more detailed policies that Labor does have provide a lot of hope for the future. There's a lot to be done on climate change and renewable energy, renovating and reinforcing Medicare, manufacturing and job security, education and training, homelessness and housing affordability, and so it goes on. My personal hope is that lessons have been learned about keeping to core principles and some damaging wrongs could even be righted, such as the decision to move sole parents to job seeker when the youngest child is eight. I've heard about the damaging impact of this in every focus group I've done with low income women since it was done. We also saw the impact of local uh, engagement and quality candidates. That was done very well in WA campaigns, as well as the highly publicised uh, efforts elsewhere. So all parties now have a lot to think about and uh, electors are enjoying a more hopeful and positive landscape. 